guys today we're telling a sad story a heart-wrenching story of a young 11 years old boy by the name Ike Chuku Anthony Okoronko who was killed on 19th of September 1996 in Oweri Imo State he was sadly killed for ritual purposes oh yeah it all began with a tip-off to the police an Okada rider a good Samaritan by the way tipped off the police as to what he had noticed when he carried a young man on his bike. He noticed how jealously the young man gathered the bag he was carrying and he also noticed there were drops of blood coming from the bag the young man was carrying. The police did not waste time as they immediately set a search. It was during that search that the shockingly discovered a decapitated head of a young boy and a penis in the bag that this young man was carrying. The young man goes by the name Innocent Ekanyaou. The police immediately arrested Ekanyaou and took him to Otokoto Hotel in Oweri, Imo State, a place where he was said to have been working at the time as a gardener. When they got to the hotel, they informed the hotel owner, who was also the managing director of the hotel in person of Chief Vincent Duru. They told him one of his workers had be, been arrested for killing a young boy. And surprisingly, Chief Vincent asked if he killed the boy with a cutlass or with a knife. How could he ask such a question? It beats me, right? Like, why was he so interested in the murder weapon? Oh, well, I guess he was confused. He wasn't expecting that arrest to have happened. Oh, well, Ekanya Wu made confessional statements to the police. And in his confessional statement, he revealed to the police how he carried out the heinous act of killing Ikechiko. According to his confessional statement, on the 19th of September 1996, Ikechiko was hawking cooked granite around Otokoto Hotel in Oweri Imo State, and Ekanya called him to come into the hotel and sell him some granite. Ikechiko, however, entered the hotel anticipating to sell him granite, and he offered Ikechiko a bottle of Coca-Cola. Ike Chuku quickly drank the Coca-Cola. I'm sure he was excited and he must have felt, oh, what a kind man. Unknown to him, that drink was piped with drugs. In no time, Ike Chuku became unconscious. And according to Ekenyahu's confessional statement, when he noticed Ike Chuku was unconscious, he went to his boss, the owner of the hotel, Otokoto, and informed him that he had found the young boy because according to him, Chief Vincent had earlier instructed him to look for a young boy they could kill so they could decapitate his head and cut off his penis to, and deliver to their client in Aziyama. So according to that statement, he said his boss told him to kill the boy and he took Ike Chuku to one of the hotel rooms which was said to be the slaughter room. Ah, slaughter room in a hotel. We need to be careful when we go to hotels. And he took him there and he killed Ikechuku. He decapitated his head, cut off the top part of his penis as instructed by Chief Vincent. He said when he was done, he went back to his boss, Chief Vincent, and informed him that he had killed the boy. And Chief Vincent asked him if he had removed the penis and decapitated the head, and he said yes, he did. He said Chief Vincent told him, well done. So Chief Vincent, according to Ekenya, instructed him afterwards to take the decapitated head and the penis to Eziama in Ikeduru local government and deliver them to Chief Leonard Unobu. Unobu. Ekenya took a trip to Eziama and unfortunately for him, when he got to Eziama, he did not meet Chief Leonard Unebo, as Chief Leonard was said to have traveled to Lagos a day before. Of course, you know, there was no phones then, so it was probably not so easy to communicate that he was traveling out of town. So, a Kenyan was left with no option but to return to Oweri with the body parts. It was on his way back to Oweri that the Okada rider who picked him noticed all that he had told the police. So, that ticked off led to his arrest and while being interrogated by the police at first he tried to play around by telling the police that he took the body 
the remaining body of Ike Chiku to a, a river, Mba River, and he led the police to a wild goose chase looking for the body at Mba River. But of course, the body wasn't there, so they couldn't find the body. When he was interrogated further, he then revealed, confessed to the police, that the remaining part of the body was buried right in Otokoto Hotel, in a cassava farm within the hotel. That was when the police began a search. And before they embarked on that search, Ekanya also revealed to the police that he was working for a syndicate of kidnappers and ritual killers, which Chief Leonard Enelbu and Chief Vincent Drew were a part of. So when the police embarked on the search in the then Otokoto Hotel in Oweri, the police made a shocking discovery of not less than 24 shallow graves. Within Oweri town at the time, there had been reports of several children getting missing and body parts had been found, people being killed, but no arrests were being made. So that was like the major, major, you know, freedom. It was like the major revelation of what had actually been happened in Oweri. That news got to the streets and the people were enraged. Chief Vincent was arrested and Chief Leonard Unel was also arrested even though Chief Vincent and Chief Leonard denied knowing each other after they were arrested. Chief Leonard also denied knowing Ekanyangu but of course they were arrested however. Something very strange happened barely four days after Ekanyangu was arrested he died in police custody of food poisoning. The guy was killed there was a desperate attempt to silence a Kenyan as he was going to mention more names and they needed him to go down so he would not call more names. Unfortunately for many of them, a Kenyan had already revealed so much to the police in his confessional statement. So killing him did not stop the police from proceeding with the information they already had at their disposal. Even though the police denied any foul pay in his death, in 2002, three police officers were sentenced to death by an Oweri High Court for their roles in the death of Ekanyaou. Their trial, the police charged seven persons in line with the death of Ike Chuku, and their trial began on the 9th of December, 2000, sorry, 1996. Before their trial began, when the news broke, as to the involvement of Otokoto hotel owner and also the shallow graves that were discovered in the hotel, words got on the streets. The indigenous of Oweri and also residents were enraged. They took to the street, they protested, they destroyed the hotel Otokoto, they destroyed every other property that was linked to the owner of Otokoto Hotel and every other person that was named as a suspect in the death of Ike Chuku. However, their trial began on the 9th of December 1996. Amongst the people that were charged were Alban Ajegu, Rufus Anyawu, Chief Vincent Duru, Chief Leonard Nagu, and Ebenezer Ekweke. And we also have Lawrence Ebo and um, Nomita. That's someone called. Uh, Samson Nomita, he was part of the persons that were charged for the death or the murder of Ike Chuku. Their trial went on for seven years and in 2003, they were all convicted for the murder of Ike Chuku Anthony Okorongo and they were all sentenced to death by Justice Choma Wosui Hema then was, they were sentenced to death by hanging. Some of them did appeal their conviction, and that was that included um, Ebenezer Ekweke and also Chief Vincent Duru. Ebenezer Ekweke was um, discharged and acquitted because he was found innocent by the Supreme Court in, in 2019. 2013. One of the reasons why he was found innocent was that he was the fact that he had worked in the hotel for 17 years does not mean he would automatically know the owner of the farm or the person who was farming the farm within the Otokoto Hotel where the body of Ikechuku was buried. So the Supreme Court found him innocent. They it dismissed him. He was him. released in 2013. At the time, he was already 62 years old. 
Chief Vincent Duro, on his own part, appealed his conviction to the Court of Appeal. Sadly, the Court of Appeal dismissed his appeal and upheld his sentence. He also appealed to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court also, also dismissed, dismissed his, his appeal, appeal and upheld his sentence. Chief Leonard Nagu, however, was said to have died mysteriously in a Port Harcourt prison. Chief Vincent Duro, whose sentence was upheld by the highest court of the land, the Supreme Court, was said to have been killed on the 13th of November 2016. Oh yes, his sentence was effectively carried out. It was sad, it must have been terrible for the family of young Ike Chuku, a little boy who just set out to make ends meet for his family and himself and some group of persons who felt that other people's lives does not matter and shouldn't matter except this cut short this young boy by killing him i'm sure his blood really cried to god and god indeed answered thanks to the laws of the lamb that would always be the last book of the common man i don't know your thoughts I would love to know your thoughts about this whole story. Would you say justice was served? Would you say the family of Ike Ikechuku got the justice that they deserve? What are your thoughts? I would love to hear them in the comment section. If you enjoyed watching this story, please guys, like our videos, share our videos, talk about our videos. We would bring you more stories of rural crimes uncovered in our society as we proceed in this journey. Like I always still tell you guys, be a good citizen, be kind to yourself, be kind to the people around you. When you see something like the Okada Rider, please say something. You may just be saving someone's life. Always be a good citizen. Take care of your mental health. Take care of your emotions. I love you and I remain dark as Ige Olu Okun. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share. Bye.